I'd love to share with you some cold climate developments that I have been researching and prototyping. So as you know, we have a dome home and a water course, and we have had a beautiful question from one of our students who moved to Canada and basically saying it's minus 40 Celsius and <clears throat> what do I do? What changes do I need to make? in my water system and uh, obviously my living environment. Um, she also mentioned the soils and that she's waterlogged. And I'll just go through all of that. But the main thing I want to address right now is the cold climate. <clears throat> Myself moving to Russia recently, as you can see here in South Africa behind me is the dome we built with our students, which is all in our training. But I have been very inspired by Earthship technology. Mike Reynolds and the veteran crew, as he calls them, from Taos, New Mexico. Although it's not very cold there, they still have pioneered something called an Earthship. I'm sure you will know it. So, how does it work? So here I have the next level of an Earthship. And I am designing a cold climate Earthship that uses Super Adobe as a mass, um, a mass walls instead of the tires. I'll still use the tire foundation because I believe we need to get rid of our tires in the environment. But as a main structure, I'd love to use Super Adobe. And here we have a beautiful sacred geometrical egg with a geodesic dome greenhouse. So myself being a dome lover, and um, just a uh, round shape, <laughs> inspired by round shapes and Gaudi, uh, I'm not quite into the rectangular Earthship style. So how do we do this? So the first thing we need to know with water, and something I learned was Mike Reynolds, so I listened to the things and I, you know, listened to the great wizards and their mistakes and I really apply and I've made myself a lot of mistakes. So what do we have here is a house is going to be fully buried. Yeah, we have a room here, which you can't see. We're going to have a little dome here with another greenhouse. We have a, a, a water tank here, just like behind this wall out of Super Adobe. And we have another room here. Four biochar filters. So all the things we teach in Biobeta Academy uh, for drinking water. Okay, but what we have is the first thing we do is the water tank. The water tank needs to be separated from the home. So hence I have a separate structure here. I haven't built it yet. Okay, but basically it's going to be separate. Mike Reynolds from Taos, from Earthship Academy, he's built a Nautilus house. You might have seen it. It had some great additions to it. But the one mistake he made, which I really listened to, is he had a water tank on the other side of the house, like I have here on this wall. And whilst you're in warm climate, it's great because the tank cools you down, the water cools you down. But if you're in a cold climate, this water, or really cold water, could provide a lot of coldness into the house. So hence. The first thing we do is the water tank has to be separate. For really cold climate, I'm going to do insulation layer behind the house. So on all the outside of the house will be insulative layer foam. Between the water tank and the house will be insulative foam, probably 10 centimeters, 4 inches. And all around the water tank will be insulation barrier dug in at least a meter deep or to the de depth of the foundation and most probably at least half a meter in my case because the house is going to be buried so the burial is what's going to stop the freezing earth and the freezing temperature to freeze the earth and the freezing temperature to get through and to freeze the water because if the water gets frozen and this tank will crack because water expands when subjected to really cold temperatures. So we're going to have a water tank just like the Super Adobe one behind this wall. 
as you can see and on the outside of the tank will be an insulative barrier 10 centimeters and insulation all around the house insulation is going to be dug in two feet into the ground to the depth of the foundation so as we dig the foundation it will allow for the insulative foam to go with it and the house is going to be buried because the burial will not allow the ice ice cold temperature of Canada and Siberia to get through to our water and even if some coldness does get through the insulative barrier the foam the foam insulation is going to stop that water from freezing so that's the first thing that I would do the second thing we're doing is in my case we're using geothermal heat and geothermal heat is very much pioneered by Canadian fella which I've seen on uh, Kirsten Dixon's um, YouTube channel and he's got a, a greenhouse that grows oranges in Canada and here we have a garden which is terraced down taps into geothermal heat and we're going to have pipes coming into the house from outside basically channeling heat warmer air because under the ground the air is depends where you live but um, 15 10 degrees celsius so if outside is minus 40 even 5 degrees celsius <laughs> is you know 45 degrees warmer than outside temperature and something else that i'm going to be combining and it's all going to be in our new training of the cold climate watilarium which i call it um, t7 and t8 the cold air which is warmed up from underneath the earth the geothermal heat is going to enter the russian style oven which i'm going to design from super adobe as well and basically the warm the warmer underground air is going to enter the oven and escape out into the house from the vents at about this height and then and then the floor is going to be unsealed normal wooden board which is not even flooring board so there'll be little tiny little gaps and that air will sink in and from underneath the floor that air is going to be pulled back into the oven and warmed up in a spiral fashion and then taken out of into cosmos so the air is going to have a double whammy warmed geothermal heat air is going to enter the oven exit so the oven is going to be taking the air from under the ground which and then the pipes will be maybe 40 50 feet away from the house you know like in a zigzag manner and this has all been tested. I'm just combining two very special technologies which both been tested. I'm combining the technology of geothermal heat and I'm combining the technology from the oven pulling in the geothermal heat air into the oven and using it as an air conditioning. In summer, this cool air will come in and exit the oven just by normal draft. And in winter, when it's really cold, this warmed air, fresh air is gonna be pulled into the oven exit the oven and now the oven is on with a little bit of fire and then that air is going to drop down through the floor because the floor is not going to be connected together like a flooring board so you can go much cheap on the flooring no insulation on the flooring sink through the floor in between the gaps and be pulled back into the oven and taken out into the cosmos this makes a living house with a warm floor because when the air gets down underneath the floor it gets to about plus 20 plus 25 celsius in the winter and it pulls back up so you have constant fresh air coming in and i will be developing this throughout the next year to two years developing our new training for this watelarium t7 
and the T8 model. This is the T8. So what we have is fresh air coming in. You always have fresh air because sometimes you get into the house and it's the stuffy air in the middle of winter. You almost can't breathe because the fire burns all the air. And because of all the passages in the oven, the Russian oven, <laughs> perfected with super adobe, is going to basically be fired only once every three days. So the use of wood is minimal. And that mass is going to go through the walls. I'm going to have pipes in the walls of Super Adobe, 4 inch metal pipes. And I'm going to have the walls warm up and be part of the oven to give back the heat. This is the technology that I'm doing. I will show you now, you have on the screen the pipes that are going to be coming in into the oven which is on the other side. Then here we have geodesic greenhouse. Just like an airship is going to be a glass facade here and a glass geodesic dome which will allow us to grow food all year round. Here will be a wall with 45 degree edges here which create a bi-geometry shape as designed by Ibrahim Karim creating BG3, high harmonic of gold, high harmonic of ultraviolet and negative green carrier wave creating a BG3 energy all the way in the house space from this wall will be a secondary greenhouse okay which will go here as you can see from a 3D render so we have a double greenhouse creating temperature difference from outside being minus 40 minus 30 celsius you get inside the first greenhouse plus 5 celsius you get into second greenhouse plus 20 5 celsius and obviously in the house the temperature will be stable between you know and controllable but between 20 and 30 degrees celsius comfortable cozy warm what we need to understand is that insulation for cold climates is crucial and mass so you really need to study the earthship technology and we in our case are applying it to a new form of a building with the dome technology as developed by Nader Kaleli from Cal Earth and Buckminster Fuller geodesic dome the other thing you need to know about cold climate is let me give you a couple of examples so my brother <coughs> is living in Russia which is just below Moscow minus 25 Celsius very very cold what he done there is he's got his water tank you know above ground which is up and that serves him during summer during winter just in autumn before the frost before the freezing he drains all the pipes he drains the water tank and he uses underground well that pulls the water underground all the pipes are one meter three feet below ground so they don't freeze because when the pipes freeze they burst so these are the couple kind of things that i am you know researching in order to build this home so the pipes are three feet underground going straight from the well and they go straight into the house with a pump. The pump house is also underground, so it doesn't freeze. So the pump and all the equipment and the filters also sit underground. In Sonia's case, um, who asks all these wonderful questions about cold climate, she's got a water-logged clay soil. Meaning, like in this dome behind me, I have an underground water tank. And the first thing that I've experienced is my water table is too high. So the water is halfway up, you know, my underground bunker, which is great if you are keeping it as a water storage container. Although you're going to have some challenges waterproofing it because if your tank is ever um, low, you're going to have other water coming in. And if it's contaminated water, it will basically contaminate through because it's just seeping in like they build the pools if you have an empty pool and you don't have the special plug in the center the whole pool can pop out from the pressure of underground water it's something to consider but because it's super adobe coils they're quite heavy the water is just seeping through so 
if you want to make an underground room, you cannot do it if you have high water table and constantly waterlogged soil. I don't know of a way. If you have land, then you want to make an above ground cellar, which I have seen in Russia and they work really, really well. In the middle of summer, you come into the first compartment and it's maybe plus five, outside is plus 25, plus 30 Celsius, first compartment plus five, second compartment is like zero <laughs> or even negative temperatures, really, really cold, really, really cold. And they basically, again, tap into the cold uh, temperature of under earth. The whole thing is buried. Um, it's something we'll be developing as well, and we'll be adding it into this course as well. Is this cold storeroom above ground. If you have land, you do not need to, you know, try and figure out how to make underground storage containers for water and um, underground bunkers for um, hiding away. If you have dry soil and the water table is deep down, no problem. You can definitely make a root cellar and it's a great investment. But if, like in Sonia's case, the water table is really high, she digs a little bit and the water fills up the hole. And you've got clay soil, <laughs> which I lived on the farm with, you've got to consider making above ground root cellar and forget underground water storage because we only really need it if we are in the city and we're tight for space. Like I was tight for space, I build an underground water tank here. But if you're on the land, you don't need to do that unless you're making a root cellar for cold temperature. But that's separate. What we are trying to discuss is how do we keep our water from freezing? How do we keep our houses warm? So the one thing I discussed here that the house is buried. So just from this wall, from this 45 degree wall, everything to the back will be buried. Okay? Insulation around the home, in all the rooms, be insulated. The water tank insulated from outside and in between the house, so the coldness of the water will not penetrate into the coldness onto, or onto the uh, super adobe mass, because mass transfers heat. Insulation, such as acrete or foam, stops moving of the temperature from one surface to another, so it will keep the hot here or the cold here, wherever is outside. So you have mass and you have insulation. And as you know, in an airship, there is a perfect ratio of plenty mass and insulation that doesn't allow this mass to cool down. And mass holds the temperature nice and solid. So we spoke about underground pipes that are going to pull temperature into the house through the oven. We spoke of how the oven is going to circulate the hot air before it gets out into cosmos through the walls and this is <laughs> my original idea and that I thought of because of super adobe because of ability of being able to hide the pipe in the bag whilst you build it and we spoke about insulation and burial here will be four biochar filters because now where do you keep your water filtration you need to keep your water filtration within the house structure so it doesn't get cold temperature attacking it because then the biochar and all filters will pop so once again we're going to have a little room here as you can see the drawn foundation and from that room we're going to have a little ferro cement vault coming to the end of the house in fact this whole house is designed to be printed by the radial 3d printer but we love our hands and we are going to use them to build ourselves homes. So it's going to be a ferro cement little seashell vault, interesting vault that will come to the, our foundation here. Again, insulation, 10 centimeter foam, and burial. At least two meters of burial past the biochar filter, two meters above, two meters on the sides, the whole thing is buried. Might be a little skylight here, if that, but really, that's the only thing you're going to see. The whole thing is going to be covered in the earth. 
and that is going to also keep our biochar filter from freezing and popping. And let me just read what other questions we have. Let's talk about, she spoke about gardening um, beds. What I've seen in Siberia, and Siberia gets as cold as Canada, is that they bring a lot of compost and the bed is raised. The bed is raised, it's about one and a half meters wide, a meter to one and a half meters wide. It's raised by about one and a half foot and it's full of good manure and good soil. Well, soil and manure makes <laughs> good soil. Manure, whilst decomposing, creates heat. So that gives them an extension to the growing period of up to two to three weeks. So when everything else you cannot grow, you can grow in these beds. And of course, little um, greenhouses, uh, just little, you know, <clears throat> bows of pipes with some greenhouse uh, cloth that you can keep the temperature there. But the, even in open air, the roots are not frozen because the land itself was manure, bumps up the temperature quite a bit. Okay, so she's worried about adobe keeping the water off. If you have a high water table and clay, you want to go above ground. You want to have this whole house raised slightly, okay? If you're on a mountain, you want to have a diversion bump, swale. Not a swale to catch water, but a swale to divert water. So you'd have, let's say this thing is on a slope, which is most probably going to be. The water is running, you want to have a little bump diverting all the water around the house, around the house. If you have a high water table, you also want to divert any water that could possibly be logging away in the bottom parts. I know here in this house, the bottom two rooms, there's mold coming up because the house, the rooms are too low. So what you want to build is a French drain, which what I have done. Simple French drain is one foot by one foot with a geotextile cloth inside, stones and perforated pipe, four inch pipe in the middle. The cloth is closed and the whole thing is buried. So that would be on the front parts of the house. So any water that comes in and becomes, so tries to make your house waterlogged at the bottom, because of the stones in the strange, creating an air gaps, the water just goes from high dense clay to the stones, which is very porous, and pulls in into the strange through a pipe and you take that water lower downhill to your garden bed or wherever you want it. So any water that's coming in, you could actually dig, if you really are in a waterlogged soil, you want to create a trench on the front part of the house, if the house is on a slope, if it's absolutely level and a high water table, I would do a trench all the way around. One, one and a half foot, by one and a half foot, with a drainix pipes in the middle. Just look at this simple French drain, it's very simple. And you just get your levels right that the water, you know, the pipe doesn't go up and down, so it goes from higher to lower, or it's absolutely level, but it needs to go to lower to one point where you take it out. So from high point to low point, and then you connect to a normal wide four inch pipe, the same one we use for sewage, and you take that water out and away from your house. As I said, the way it works is high dense clay, very heavy duty, very waterlogged, finds the strange and the water through the cloth, through geotextile, through the, it enters the stones because there are lots of gaps. So the water from all the pressure and the clay sitting there, boom, finds this emptiness in between the stones, gets into the uh, get into the strange in between the stones, get into this pipe and, and you'll see water actually leaking out of the pipe. This is the water that would usually waterlog your house, create mold and so on. So you want to do a simple French drain to get the water out 
in um, waterlogged soils. Will the super adobe bags crack in winter? Just like mass, just like bricks, I don't believe they were going to crack. But we are going to have the house buried. I know the folk in Canada have built a super adobe house and I don't know what the experience is, but I can guarantee you that if they haven't done insulation on the outside of their walls, their house is going to be very, very cold because basically the minus 40 hits the mass of the house and the walls just transfer it to the inside and you have to bake lots of fire to just keep yourself warm because you have this, you're constantly fighting the minus 40. So the most probably done an insulative layer which stops the minus 40 to entering the super adobe bag. So Sonia, most definitely cover your super adobe in insulation layer if you're in Canada. In our case, we're doing the Earthship technology. So insulation layer, burial. On top of the burial, I'm going to have an entire um, EPDM liner, stretchable liner, creating my roof as, so the whole big thing behind is going to be water catchment. So I'm gonna have a cloth that goes slightly lower to one point and going to get water to this water tank. The water tank is going to have an overflow, probably two, three pipes overflow, that's going to take that water out away from that. And when the tank is full, the water must not enter the, uh, the, the water tank. So that's another thing. I'm probably going to control it by how much water can enter through a pipe this size and overflow at least two or three pipes this size. So you can never have water overflowing and going into the house. So when the water is overflowing, it's just going to leak over the edges. So these are very careful um, gradients you have to get. So you have to really plan it out. And that's why I'm going to spend a long time slowly planning this house, planning the roof so the water can enter the a tank and the excess water can leave. Because God forbid <laughs> you have water leaking inside because inside this house is just going to get water log so water is a really serious issue so much planning has to go in there and that's why i've learned from mike reynolds and um, jeff lawton and other masters but at the end of the day we need to try these things and what we're doing here is very much breakthrough technology with water and with uh, having the epdm liner all buried so on top of the epdm liner will be some sand and a little bit of stones lightweight stones and that will create as a first filter so all the mosquito wings and uh, scupper that's what the earthship um, architecture calls it. a little scupper that doesn't allow mosquito uh, wings and butterflies and bees and bird poo to enter the water tank so first filtration layer then epdm liner to get the water into the water tank. Excess water overflows from EPDLM liner out, out probably to the sides and forward around and out. If the house is on a slope, depends what slope it is. But obviously this part has to face the sunny side. It is south facing in the northern hemisphere and north facing in the southern hemisphere. I know my cradles has a slight tilt, which I'll look into north northeast or you know um, that's um, he suggests a slight tilt to get that morning sun to enter sooner and um, but it's definitely placed on the sunny side that's how it's going to work so the sun traveling in summer more higher and in winter lower I'm going to enter this the secondary glass facade is also transparent so there's going to be a glass window here allowing the sunlight to come in and the winter sun traveling low is going to come in and still warm up this house believe it or not still going to warm up this house even winter sun because of the double um, glass here glass facade and um, gonna have probably transparent mesh that cannot tear 
on the outside as a second greenhouse. So all of that's going to allow sunlight to come in. How can I uh, put animal stock water heater? But those water heaters use up tons of electricity and my long-term goal is to be off-grid. Again, you want a like in permaculture with stack multiple functions. So the stove needs to have a simple metal brick. Either on a, you have a bricks that can go inside the stove, so make sure that you can get it out if it ever bursts, and it has basically a pipe going in and going out. I'll do a little recording for you now on the stove outside. Or you have a pipe going on the chimney, just that, that uh, chimney that just exits the stove. Um, in my case, it's going to enter Super Adobe. You want to have some copper pipe wrapped around and then <clears throat> some acrete or some in, maybe some acrete poured, so allowing that heat to stay in there to, to warm up the pipe and then the pipe is going to exit. So maybe the first three feet is going to be wrapped with this copper pipe um, and then this is your hot water that can be, again, you've got to get the levels right because if your hot water is, hot water rises, no, the hot, the container has to be higher. The actual drum has to be higher than this uh, collector. Then the, co then the collector will all circulate water with your container, keeping that hot water in the container. And then that hot water can be distributed to um, wherever you need to use it. So you want to stack multiple functions. So your stove is your air conditioning in summer as the air comes in from under the geothermal uh, pipes, steel pipes, um, but a lot of these are going to be subject to research and building and I'll obviously creating a whole entire course. I'm just giving a, a gist of where this is going. To. Okay, so what we have here is the front part of the house. We have a teared down beer vegetarian greenhouse. The reason that it's stepped down because the sun is going to come and warm up this step, this step so you will maximize the area. The bottom part is going to be water for aquaculture system. This is where we're going to warm up. Um, some geothermal pipes are going to come into this space and warm up this area as well. Probably through our fireplace in winter too, so our fireplace will also warm up the, the space. But we're going to try and tap into as much geothermal heat as possible. We're going to have a wetland here for sewerage water, for black water. Which is going to treat water and allow that water to irrigate our food forest garden. And basically, on this side, we're going to have all the microgreens. With grow lamps, we're going to have the wheat grass, the beetroot seeds, a whole bunch of alfalfa seeds and other microgreens. They're going to be growing in trays on this wall. There's going to be another room here. There's going to be another room here with a vault, vaulted room here with also another greenhouse. Everywhere is going to be a double greenhouses growing. This is more of an airship style, a straight up greenhouse. And let's just see the water tank. This is the water tank behind the house, which I wanted to show you. And those are the pipes that are going to go into the wall, allowing the fireplace to heat the house, to heat the walls. And to, because of insulation, the walls are going to keep the temperature for a long long time because there's a lot of mass and after the insulation there is the burial which is basically going to be another two meters of soil so there's going to be a lot of mass and all that mass is going to keep the temperature and going to keep it solid there because the insulative layer is not going to allow for the warm temperature to escape and the cold to get in so this is what I wanted to share with you with the new sacred geometrical, biogeometrical Watelarium Eco Home, which I'm designing based on Earthship technology, Cal Earth technology, 
permaculture technology, geothermal heat technology, and the clever Russian stove technology. So there's a lot of different tech that I'm going to be applying here. And I'm gonna take two years to develop this training. Should you wish to purchase the training, it will eventually be at $500 for everything, the water, the geothermal, how to build this entire home with the aquaculture system. Upfront tickets and sell them for $200. So if you wish to do so, here is the PayPal address. Yeah, so that's basically it uh, for the lesson on the cold climate and high water table. And you can transfer the money in and I will sign you up to the training. I will be starting to build it as soon as I arrive in Russia in summer of 2020. Now starting to build it with the Earthship Foundation and getting the pipes in and all the digging. And as I get the different parts of the course ready, I will post it up online. So if you have any other questions on cold climate technology, on uh, waterlogged soils, and on how to build sustainable eco-homes, please post your comments below and I'll come back to them in due course. Thank you. Have a great day.